So, in case you guys haven't noticed, Aston Martin this year has been underperforming quite a bit compared to how they were back in 2020 season. So now that we have completed five races, that's basically a quarter of the 2021 season. Uh, I think it makes sense to compare the stats and see how the current driver lineup fares in comparison with the previous season. And the most important question of all would be, um, is Vettel a worthy successor of Paris? So to be fair, Vettel in Paris is not really an apples to apples comparison. Sebastian Vettel is a four-time world champion, probably a couple of years from his retirement, sick of a toxic atmosphere at Ferrari, uh, and you know, basically looking for you know one last adventure before he hangs his boots. Paris, on the other hand, is a Grand Prix winner. Uh, it's true, uh, an established midfield driver in his own right. Uh, in many ways, the Mr. Reliable when given a challenging car conditions. But Paris has much more to prove still um, compared to the four-time world champion. So, as I said, it's not exactly an apples-to-apples comparison. Now, comparing the stats with the last year, the former Racing Point driver started four out of his five starts within the first ten positions of the grid. Yep, that's basically 80% of the, of the time he was uh, in within P10. Um, compared to that, Vettel only managed to put the car within P10 twice this year so far, so that is Portugal and Monaco. Now again, um, to be fair, Vettel in 2021 is in a car completely different uh, in any other car that he has driven in his career. Um, so be it Red Bull or Ferrari, it's a, it's a totally different ballgame. Um, so he basically has a steep learning curve, let's say. Uh, while Paris in 2020 was in a car that is familiar to him within years of his track experience. So it's completely different. Yeah, so adding to this, Vettel himself mentioned that it would take at least four races for him to come to grips with the way the car behaves. So, all in all, Vettel was a terrible idea, right? Well, it's probably not as simple as that. Now, to understand this better, there are a couple of facts that need to be digested. First of all, Christian, having a world champion in your team, is it a huge boost? Yes, it is a huge boost in many areas. Uh, and it's probably worth the additional money you pay him. So, for instance, the uh, battle name would attract more sponsorship than the Paris name would. So that's more money for the team to play with. Um, Another would be that Vettel could probably pull from his years of experience in Red Bull, um, also from Ferrari, uh, while building a car for the coming years. Yeah, so that's the future of Aston Martin secured. Um, the other thing would be that you know Vettel could act as a mentor, uh, and you know that's that's a big deal for the son of the owner. Um, probably learn more from Vettel than probably Paris. Now, what if Vettel performs poorly? This is then a chance for Lance to show the world that he is you know, capable of consistently beating a former world champion. So that's a win for him. And you know, what if Vettel performs well? Well then, it's no harm to Lance. Uh, after all, Vettel is a world champion, so it's not easy to beat a world champion. Um, and on the plus side, it is further points to the World Championship. Yeah, so it's a overall a win-win for um, Aston Martin. So in summary, Vettel was probably not hired in place of Paris to have a better driver than Paris. It is to bring uh, in so many other benefits that uh, Paris can never help achieve. Um, so basically, stepping in the shoes of Lawrence Stroll, as I said just now, and sense uh, to have it on board. Paris even though had a terrible shock um, initially when he was sacked probably would be thanking his stars that he got sacked now and now you know, he is sitting in a car that can the only car that can you know really 
artistically challenged wits it is. So that brings us to battle. 2020 was a horrible year for Ferrer. For him, going back to Red Bull was not an option anymore. That door was shut by Christian Horner several years back. And Mercedes, they did not have a vacancy to fill. For him, the only other good option until the very end of last year, before McLaren came at the end of the uh, season to clinch third position, until then probably it was a clear choice. That is the thing said. Um, so it made sense in 2020. But what about now? If you ask me, I think Aston Martin definitely does not have what it takes to be the third best this year. Um, the best hope is probably fifth best after McLaren and Ferrari. Um, we might not see Sebastian up on the podium at all this year. Of course, the rest of his races, uh, prob- you know, he would not even probably, um, you know, P10 or higher finishes. Um, yeah, so um, is this really what Sebastian wanted? Maybe it was. Um, maybe this for him is better than finishing behind Leclerc in every case. Yeah, so that's uh, basically his rationale for moving. At least now he has a teammate he can 